I'm Corbett Wall with DV Auction, here with your feeder flash for Tuesday, May the 24th, brought to you in part by Ytex. The Ytex Corporation provides livestock producers with excellence in animal health. Check out all their products at y-tex.com. Feeders regionally priced, similar to the way the fat cattle have been regionally priced, and by that I mean there's a premium uh, for, your, for your Midwest or Northern Plains cattle more than typical. It's been running several dollars here for several weeks and of late we've seen uh, a bigger premium for your northern type cattle too. Not necessarily the northern types because we got northern types of cattle in the southern plains also but I just mean regionally. Uh, your, your freight is costing so much basically uh, for these uh, bull haulers to, uh, to be able to afford to haul cattle they've got to charge whatever diesel is and, and that's what most of them are doing is charging what, what diesel price is per loaded mile and you can't blame them for that I mean it, it costs that for them to do it uh, but uh, we, we've seen a uh, big disparage in the price and I'm talking on feeder cattle going right into the feedlot eight and nine weight cattle a uh, big, big disparage between those that are close to the farmer feeders and those that are down uh, further from the farmer feeders or, or closer to just your commercial uh, feedlot areas. But I uh, mean, we've seen uh, just here today. I'm going to give you quotes late in the day here of uh, some cattle up in uh, up in Nebraska, uh, Western Nebraska. You know, weighing in the middle eights, bringing over 165. Well, you know, I thought everything was supposed to be cheaper. Uh, no, it was not cheaper. Uh, but you look at the Oklahoma National Stockyards, their feeder cattle were 2 to $4 lower again, uh, with a lot of those just averaging in the low 140s. Uh, and, and not that much difference in the, in the cattle, especially this time of year where you don't have to have a lot of hair on these cattle. In fact, those cattle without a lot of hair might end up uh, feeding uh, closer to your to your more English type cattle that you typically have in the north because they won't be so hot but uh, we're just seeing seeing that going on quite a bit and uh, and I'm going to give you some more quotes that'll that'll uh, kind of explain that too later but uh, we talked about why that is well even though corn's at a big price and uh, and we're talking about uh, not necessarily corn shortages but food and feed shortages in areas uh, the corn has been largely planted now. You looked at your, your planting's uh, progress that came out on Tuesday morning and it showed that uh, in your big states that matter, 72% of your corn has now been planted. That compares to your five-year average of 79, so not too far behind that. And we knew we had some spots that were dry or waiting on moisture to get planted. Other areas were waiting for it to warm up and get the soil temperatures up a little bit before they planted, but not running too far behind. That 72% compares to just a week ago, they were at 49% planted. Tell you what, the equipment they got now, it doesn't take a whole long time to, uh, to get that uh, planting completed. But look at your, your big states like Iowa, they're 86% planted, Nebraska's 85% planted, and uh, the, most of the, the shortages are coming out in your eastern corn belts, but they've had plenty of rain, and now they've had plenty of rain in most of the Midwest too. Now there's still some dry spots in South Dakota. Uh, you know, there could be some few dry spots in Nebraska and around, but for the most part, we're getting uh, at least close to normal, if not some heavy uh, measurements of, of uh, uh, moisture in most of the areas. Uh, you get up into the areas that's been uh, so hard hit by uh, drought and it's affected the cattle production like eastern Montana. I'm sure they'd like to have some more rain. Uh, areas on the extreme uh, western part of South Dakota, they could still use some rain. They did get some snows, but they could use some pretty good rain there too. But uh, I, I took a trip uh, up in the Midwest there over the weekend. Basically, that dryness uh, where, it, where it goes from wet to dry is Interstate 35. And if you're looking uh, west uh, as you're going up inter Interstate 35, it goes drier the farther you look. And if you go, if you look uh, to the east, it gets wetter uh, the further you look. But I was up in uh, uh, 
uh, all in Missouri there, and I mean Missouri looks fantastic, and I lived the bulk of my adult life there, so I know what it should look like, and it's just unbelievable, uh, the grass that they've got there. Uh, it was cool early, but it's warmed up lately, and the grass has just been exploding up there, and you can't stay ahead of it. You can't overgraze it enough that fescue this time of year when it's raining at least every other day and that grass is just growing its head off but uh, uh, we are actually getting some rain here on Monday evening uh, in the Amarillo area as I sit here in Canyon Texas I kinda got a nice shower out there and the winds not blowing 70 or 80 miles an hour either so it's really nice uh, to get a little shower here and, and uh, kinda wet the dust down a little bit uh, and I noticed uh, looking at the radar that some of those storms were coming from uh, parts of New Mexico which they haven't had any moisture in any part of New Mexico really at all so far this spring so man they are loving anything they can get there uh, gonna be going there they'll of course move on across to Oklahoma Oklahoma's had some good moisture in the eastern half of the state but not so much the western half of the state uh, noticed something to come out uh, on Facebook social media uh, that was uh, released on Monday was uh, our old friends at the Texas Farm Bureau uh, which uh, I uh, allow them to insure uh, four vehicles for me and my home uh, kind of thinking twice about it I don't, I don't mean to tell you to people to, to uh, blackball anybody but sure frustrate you when your uh, your money's going towards uh, things like this, but they put out a long extended uh, uh, post and, and then it also included a, a website you could go to uh, where they were really talking down the Cattle Price Discovery and Transparency Act. You think, well, you know, what, what gives there? Well, Texas Farm Bureau is going to throw right in with your Texas Cattle Feeders Association and, uh, and that's the way that goes. Uh, one thing that I saw immediately in the first paragraph of the post that uh, they had an untruth there saying that Texas Farm Bureau and the American Farm Bureau Federation opposed this bill. That's not true. The American Farm Bureau Federation initially opposed the bill then got some serious backlash uh, from several of their affiliates in the, uh, in the southeast and, and around different areas and they changed their stance, their position, and backed off of that and decided to just ride the fence. American Farm Bureau Federation's policy is uh, they were just going to let uh, each state uh, decide what they wanted to do. Well, of course, whenever you get to uh, give Texas Farm Bureau uh, the, the, the ability to do what they want to do, they're going to side up with their old buddies at Texas Cattle Feeders Association and the National Corporate Beef Association uh, that runs all that and they like to stick together and then feel like they're really helping people but I doubt anybody at Texas Farm Bureau really understands this bill at all uh, they said that uh, legislative mandates will decrease the price of cattle really okay how do you figure that uh, and then they also say that uh, at uh, yeah, these uh, if, if we if the, uh, the cattle feeders were forced and I hate it when people say that cattle feeders will be forced cattle feeders are not going to be forced to do a damn thing uh, the, the packers will uh, have all the the uh, uh, the uh, pressure on them to increase their percentages of negotiated trade to meet at least uh, minimum levels and it's going to be per facility now if you're if you're a, a cattle feeder shouldn't you be able to sell your cattle any way that you want to sell them or, or but they know that that's not the the way because their packers push them around and force them to do all this kind of stuff and and they're afraid that they won't be able to sell them the way they want to sell them guys whenever whenever they start uh, uh, enforcing these mandates on these packers these packers are going to be hungry for anybody that will sell their cattle negotiated because they are going to have to step it up and I realize and we've got a group over on the other side that's saying it's not near strong enough well it's going to be about the average of the last two years let's say in Texas feedlot areas it's going to be 8% negotiated trade well 8% negotiated trade is not a hell of a lot why is everybody throwing such a bitch fit about it uh, just having 8% uh, negotiated trade 
And, and if you go on to read uh, this post with Texas Farm Bureau, the way they're acting is that they're going to outlaw alternative marketing agreements. You won't be able to get one at all. No, the alternative marketing agreements have totally uh, bombarded uh, Texas feedlot sales and, and it's not going to change. It's going to hold that level at the minimum level. Now, after two years, whenever USDA gets somebody in there, uh, do an economic analysis and see where we can get robust trade, we're likely going to crank that up a little bit. But your alternative marketing agreements are still going to be uh, by a uh, lion's share of what the trade is. So why is everybody getting so excited about this? It's because they're getting pressure, they're getting paid under the table, uh, they're, they're uh, forcing this deal, they want to stay in good graces uh, with, the, with the big corporate outfits, and uh, that's why they're pushing this. But they're saying that uh, you know if we, if we uh, get rid of these AMAs, it could cost 23 to 249 million dollars a year to ranchers in Texas. Uh, now you can tell that, that that's got to be the dumbest uh, uh, research you've ever seen. It ranges from 23 million to 249 million. How's it going to cost them? Uh, what do they do? Are they totaling up uh, the little bit of premiums that are paid uh, on these alternative marketing agreements? Did uh, some of these big corporates let them look under the covers and see what their sweetheart deal is? I doubt it. I really doubt that they did that because they don't want to show that to anybody and that's one reason they don't want this bill is because it will uh, put into law the cattle contract library. They're just guessing and, and if they are putting in uh, the, the little bit of premiums that are paid, I guarantee you they're not counting the, the discounts on those AMAs that come off the other end. You know, perhaps, maybe, if we had a little bit more negotiated trade, uh, then you would have your packers more aggressively bidding for the cattle that are in loose hands and then your guys in Texas and moving up into Kansas which is probably going to be somewhere between between 12 and 15 percent negotiated trade as a mandate if we get it uh, which is nothing uh, then, then maybe they can negotiate a higher price for their cattle like the guys in the northern plains are doing you know, that, that's the biggest reason because they have no leverage in Southern Plains. So the few guys that still sell cash and get that uh, cash price, uh, you know, published so that your AMAs can exploit that number and, and move it up. You know, how would, how would you like to keep, you know, 90% AMAs? Uh, force every packer to uh, participate in a minimum level and then get a higher base price for all those cattle into the AMAs. Would that be okay for you guys? Uh, it's just frustrating whenever you see that. Uh, the, you know, if you went to the website, they, they went on and on. Uh, they cited Dr. Kuntz, whose research is paid for by your tax, your uh, checkoff dollars through National Corporate Beef Association. So you definitely know which way he's leaning. And if you watched his testimony, uh, at the Cong Congressional Ag uh, Committee reports, you saw that he was totally tainted. So that's not a third party neutral uh, uh, point of view right there. And then the other uh, uh, research that they cited was done by professors from the University of Arkansas. I wonder who the hell they work for when Tyson is on the name of every building over there. Very frustrating. Let's talk about your board to start the week. June live cattle futures up a buck twenty at one thirty two seventy seven. August was up a dollar forty two at one thirty two ninety seven. Now we've known this thing is oversold. Just being up a buck and, and some change is not going to fix that. But it's just nice to to not be down big time. But uh, your back months on June live cattle down two cents to up 95. It was only one traded month there that was down. It was only two cents, but largely higher. May feeder cattle contracts up a nickel at 153.45. August up a dollar 70 at 165.62. Your back months on your feeder cattle up 45 to up 135. Your grains uh, were kind of mixed. Corn was up seven and a half cents uh, by the end of regular trading 
at 786 and a quarter cent a bushel. Beans were down 18 and a quarter cent at 1687. Seemed like whatever uh, your futures had been doing the, in the latter part of last week, they were doing the opposite on Monday. Kansas City was up uh, 23 and three quarter cent for hard red winter wheat. Ending regular uh, trading session at 12.76 and a half cent a bushel. Uh, your weighted average on last week's negotiated direct fed cattle sales in your five area feeding region totaled just short of 78,000 head, just a few off of the 80,200 we had the previous week, but more than the 69,300 we had the same week a year ago. Live sales, fat steers and heifers range from 136 to 145 which was one to three dollars lower. Uh, your weighted average on live steers was 140 and a quarter for all of last week. That was down two dollars and 19 cents compared to the weighted average from the previous week. We're likely gonna be in a free fall here for the next uh, six weeks to two months. Dress sales, 219 to 229. That was also one to three dollars lower on the spread. Weighted average on dress steers, 225.80 which was down $3.02 compared to the weighted average from the previous week. Nationwide, we only had 89,900 head in negotiated sales in your, in your whole uh, nation there, uh, compares to 40,500 negotiated grid and then way too many, you know, near a quarter million uh, formula sales there. And that's why we've got the problems we want and why nobody wants to change it and, and uh, and keep this industry viable for small producers, I have no idea. I, I just I just has to math to be greasy palms. That's the only thing it could be. But of the 89,900 head negotiated, 39,900 of those were for the two to four week delivery. So that's 44%. They're still setting the market up. They're not gonna be happy with taking it down 10 bucks in a month or six weeks. They're gonna go for 20 bucks in six to eight weeks but uh so they're still setting the market up trying to buy cattle uh out front and so whenever they get into a, a significantly bigger show list here uh with those uh big fat calves that were put on feed that uh, they're not going to like near as much and they're not going to be near as heavy but they're ready to go uh they can set this market up for fall on monday we did see a little bit of trade in kansas at 138 that was to a nebraska regional uh, we, we saw several bids from the majors at 135, so they're already setting the market up for at least a $3 loss, if not $5 loss, this week. Box beef cutout values were higher. Choice cuts 264.28 up 211. Selects 244.23 up $1.21. Uh, your Monday uh, harvest was very good at 125,000, so we're set up for another big week like we had last week talk about what else is going on beaver county stockyards 1800 head which is a lighter run from them talked to jeff slatton on monday evening he said they'll sure have 10 loads of yearlings which they always have several load lots of yearlings there and i told him to look out because they're going to be a flash flood coming through his area uh, according to the weather uh, and he said that if it uh, if it rains significantly he would kiss my ass so I don't blame him there, but I'm not sure what to hope for. Let's talk about your feeder cattle market, your real-time index on DV auction. Late in the day on Monday, sitting at 150.19, up 13 cents. And you think, well, all of your Monday big sales were supposed to be lower. A lot of them were lower, but, it, but like I opened your report up with, in the Northern Plains and up in the Midwest, they weren't lower, they were higher because those farmer feeders uh, they know that the, the numbers are going to be running out, I mean, uh, progressively. And as we get into the full, uh, full bore summer, it'll be hard to find uh, load lots of yearlings up there. So they're getting them bought now. They're looking at that corn. It looks pretty darn good. Uh, I saw some corn that had a nice stand on it already. Uh, and, uh, and, the, and the fields were wet and the sun was shining. Looks pretty good. I mean, we may not have... Uh, a record crop, uh, but we might. Uh, but uh, still, those farmer feeders, they've still got on farm storage. A lot of it nobody knows anything about. They don't want to have to pay taxes on that stuff. Guys are going to feed it to cattle. How about uh, your big sales on Monday? Oklahoma National Stockyards in Oklahoma City, 
10,000 head. You think, wow, why'd they have so many? Did they have a big run off graze out wheat? No. Would there have been a few come off graze out wheat in the eastern areas of uh, Oklahoma? Yes, there probably would be a few of those. But the main reason for having a bigger run, no sale next week for Memorial Day uh, holiday there. So uh, getting them all sold uh, this, this Monday, Oklahoma City, 10,000 head. Feeder steers were 2 to $4 lower. Feeder heifers were unevenly steady. Calves sold 6 to $8 lower. Not enough of those old crop uh, stockers to really call a market on. They would have sold just as good or better if they'd have had them, but didn't see too many impressive quotes like that. Joplin Regional Stockyards, 6,400 head, steady to $4 higher. Uh, so, and, and, you know, it's just that far. Just that, just that little trip up by 44 there, uh, that it was a little bit, uh, a little bit better, and you could see it on the quotes. It was a little bit better. It's a little bit closer uh, to those northern areas and those farmer feeders. Not quite as much freight. Uh, no sale next Monday at Joplin, and that's significant because they normally would have a sale on Memorial Day, but not this Memorial Day. They are going to be closed. So uh, don't plan on sending cattle or buying any out of Joplin next Monday. They will have their regular sales on through the rest of the week, though, at Joplin after Monday. How about some uh, individual quotes I want to give you from all around the circuit? How about Kirksville Livestock Market in Kirksville, Missouri? That's up there in the northeastern part of the state. Uh, their auctioneer world champion Brian Curlis sent me a quote out of there. A load of steers weighed 938 pounds, bring 149.85. Kirksville, Missouri. How about Callaway Livestock Center? I was watching them on DV Auction on Monday. Uh, man, did they have some nice cattle there, including 97 head of fancy five weight steers from the Weber family in Westphalia, Missouri. 97 head, 537 pound, all black, black, white faced fancy steers. Bring 20850 Callaway Livestock, Kingdom City, Missouri. How about Elgin Livestock Sales in Elgin, Nebraska? My buddy Ted Baum sold 95 head, or 65 head, 947 pound steers at 11510. Uh, Sioux Falls Regional Livestock in Worthing, South Dakota, their DV auction customer, they sold 60 head of big 1,083 pound steers at 139.50, uh, with the market just at 140 and falling. And it won't take too long to get those guys done, guys. But a uh, pretty good quote on some big warmed up steers at Sioux Falls Regional. But the best quote that I saw anywhere on Monday, your Rao Grow top quote for the day, come out of Tri-State Livestock Auction in McCook, Nebraska. 62 head of steers weighed 841 at 165 and a quarter. And that's your feeder flash for Tuesday.